Aha, you know what that is? Oh my god, that is so disgusting. I can't believe I let things get this far with my poor plants. Hey plant people, how you doing? My name is Dimitri and I'm going to talk to you guys today about using beneficial insects for your house plants. Um, I just want to start by saying that if you're looking for a really, excuse me, if you're looking for a really thorough how-to, this is probably not for you, um, maybe keep on looking. Um, I'm just going to talk about my experience so far and the things that I've done. So if you want to come along on that journey with me, then stick around. Okay, so our winter this year was really long. We had a really extreme lockdown. It was so cold. I had personal stuff going on. I feel like my plants, they just weren't given the love and attention that they really deserved this last season gone from me. I was looking around my plant room and I noticed that I had some pest issues that had gotten way out of control. You saw that nasty footage that I just put in before I started chatting away here. Um, spider mites, I swear I saw some mealybugs, some other bizarre little pinhole nibbles on my plant leaves that I reckon would have been thrips. There was a lot of issues. God, it is so embarrassing even just talking about this. Um, but hey, we're human. I'm human. It happens sometimes and I'm here to make things right. I've tried pesticide uh, sprays. I've tried making my own sprays like horticultural oils from using dish soap and oil, uh, making my own mix. Um, and I, I don't love it. I feel like it always leaves some kind of residue on the leaves. I also feel that with repeated use, it damages the leaves of your plants. Um, maybe I overdo it, I'm not sure. Um, I'm just, I'm not into it that much. So I wanted to try something different. Um, I like the idea of using natural remedies for these things as well. Um, so I had a consultation with my good friend, Google, very clever, knowledgeable fellow. Um, and I came across an Aussie website called Bugs for Bugs. Um, and they specialize in uh, predatory insects um, for pests, different, a whole range of different pest problems that you might have. Um, and because I had so many different kind of pest problems in my plants, um, I wanted something that was quite broad. Um, so the company recommended that I use green lacewing larvae. Um, so green lacewings are these beautiful little green insects with really, really pretty wings. The insects themselves, the green lacewings, do not actually hunt the pests. It's just their larvae that does. So you can buy either the adults um, and then they will then lay eggs which will then go off and hunt your pests, or you can buy the eggs. They will hatch, start hunting down your pests, and when they turn into the green lace wings, they're gonna search for nectar, because that's what they eat. So you can either provide some flowers and things for them to feed, or just re release them. Um, so in my home, I probably wouldn't want green lace wings flying around, so when, I, when they do get to that point, um, I'll probably just open a window and let them kind of live their best life in the wild outside. Um, so it's been about three weeks now since I released them. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about the process, what I did, show you guys some footage and where I'm at today. So, Okay, so as I mentioned before, I went with a company called Bugs for Bugs. It's an Australian company. They only ship within Australia, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I'll tell you about the process and I'm sure if you're not from Australia, you could find a similar company that will be able to provide bugs for you. Um, okay, so I ordered the green lacewing larvae. They came in this tiny little container. Um, I ordered 500 eggs, so they arrived with these rice hulls, um, as well as a sterilized moth egg. Basically, the larvae are actually cannibalistic. So if they hatch and there's no food around, they're just gonna eat each other. And that's not what we want because we want these things alive and to start snacking on all those pestiferous insects that are eating your plants. Bugs for Bugs recommend that you do not disturb your little plastic container of beneficial insects until you see some movement in there to make sure that they've actually began hatching and that they're hunting already. As soon as my packet arrived, I could see that there was movement. So they had definitely hatched and they were moving around and that they were looking for food. So pretty much as soon as they arrived, I put all my plants as close together as I could, made sure all the leaves were connected in some way, making little leaf highways so that when I distributed the 
beneficial insects on the leaves that they could start hunting and access all the different pests that were everywhere throughout my collection. So all my plants are in this motley crew, this ramshackle situation, all shoved in the corner next to each other. I know it looks a right fright. Um, but yeah, once I did that, I sprinkled the rice hulls onto some of the broader leaf plants. I tried to distribute them really evenly throughout my collection, but obviously putting more on plants that needed a little bit more of a helping hand. Like this beautiful orbifolia here, I really love and cherish this plant. Now I'll take you to the other side of my little quarantined plant room. Um, you can see I've got a whole bunch of my plants just shoved up really close together. Uh, you can see some of the sites where I released um, some of the green lacewing larvae onto the leaves. I even spilt some onto the ground in front, if you can see. I was really worried about that at first, but now that I've seen how much these guys actually travel, how much they really spread out and go hunting i'm not stressed at all because i know they're just going to seek out that prey um, and go hunt down those pests in terms of how many you might need uh, bugs for bugs advertise that you need say 10 larvae per plant so in this room i've got about 50 or so really small plants so i got 500 and i would say it was pretty spot on pretty perfect amount uh, after two weeks i've not seen any signs of pests anywhere and i'm super thrilled to be able to say that <laughs> Alrighty, so here's some footage of the green lacewing larvae when I first got it. So maybe two, three weeks ago, you can see they're hardly coming up on camera. They were so teeny tiny. And then after two weeks, they grew so much. I would say at least they doubled in size. Um, one cool fact about these guys is they actually wear the shells of their prey on their back. So once they've done eating them, sucking all the life juice out of their prey, they literally wear their bodies on their back like some kind of hermit shell. It's really weird, but kind of cool. It's like a trophy for them. I don't know. I kind of respect that. So this one here, it looks like it's even begun to cocoon. I'm not sure if that's what the cocoons look like when they start to prepare to become the green lacewing. I'm not even sure to be honest, but hey, it's done that um, and it hasn't moved for at least a couple of days now. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for any um, green lacewings flying around. Here's another one working hard, eating all the pests off my orbifolia, which I'm super happy to see. The harder they work, the less work I've got to do. I would have to say that I'm a fan of using these guys. I feel like they work really hard. They definitely cleaned up my pest situation in my plant room and I've not seen any signs of pests anywhere for a while now. I really wanna trial using these guys outside. I feel like it's gonna be a different ball game though because I would wanna establish a healthy reproducing population. So to do that, I have to make sure that I've got a food source for the adults because as I mentioned earlier, the adults, they eat pollen and nectar. So you wanna make sure you've got a lot of flowering plants around for them. Um, and then if they're happy, they're gonna reproduce and keep creating more larvae, which in turn are gonna eat the bad bugs that I want them to. Well, that brings us to the conclusion of this video. If you have any tips or tricks that you'd like to share or experiences that you wanna talk about in relation to beneficial insects, please go ahead and share that with me. This is something that's new for me too, and I'm happy learning. If you like this video, please press like, and thank you so much for watching. Bye.